On April 19th, I decided to embark on a challenge never done before, completing Battle for Bikini Bottom with only Spongebob. Up until this point, everybody knew that completing this task was doable on GameCube. A runner by the name of 420 Blazik completed it just last year, although fulfilling this challenge on Xbox was a pipe dream. Let's just say GameCube had some very interesting tech. However, what I didn't realize is that when I booted up my stream, I would be truly suffering for hours on end. This is my journey of completing Spongebob Squarepants Battle for Bikini Bottom on Xbox with only Spongebob. I went into this challenge with a plan, going to each level once and make a clean sweep of all the collectibles. This was so I didn't feel overwhelmed near the end. Unfortunately, the latter half of this run took a turn, but we'll get to that. After collecting everything available in Area 1, I dove headfirst into jellyfish fields. Fortunately, we were able to get most of the spatulas present. However, the spatula for the first combat area isn't obtainable, as rescuing Patrick changes you to Patrick. The sad part about this one is you can see the spatula right in front of you during the cutscene. As I progressed further in the jellyfish fields, I opted to break out of bounds, skipping the entire cave section you're supposed to do as Patrick. The spatula at the end of the cave I did not get at the time because I wasn't sure how to go about it. Drain the Lake is another Patrick exclusive spatula. Reason being is, Patrick is the only one in the game that can throw enemies, meaning Spongebob cannot obtain the spatula without lag clipping, which isn't possible in a Spongebob only run as you don't collect the bubble bowl or the cruise missile from defeating Robot Sandy and Robot Patrick respectively. You can actually one frame up here, I remember being able to. <laughs> it's so sick, dude. Some of these tricks. The rest of the level was a breeze. Playing jellyfish fields with all these unique tricks and actually fighting the final boss as intended took me back to simpler times playing this game as a kid. It's always great to mix up how you play your favorite games from time to time. Next, I tried out Downtown Bikini Bottom. I already knew going into this that a large portion of this level was going to be blocked off, but I still held my optimism. Everything in the streets area was simple enough to grab. I even got all the wheels that I could just in case I could find a way to traverse the rooftops. Once I finished streets, I paid the claim and entered the Sea Needle. After completing the Mr. Krabs challenge, I tried to hit the button on the other side of the southern door using the bubble wand. If you have the cruise missile, you're actually able to trigger the button by the explosion of the hitbox, but in Spongebob only, getting past this door or grabbing the corresponding spatula is not doable. I then performed a Spongebob storage to get to an area not normally accessible by Spongebob. Once in rooftops, I exploited jumping underneath an invisible wall to grab the spatula you normally get by paying a clam and lassoing over a sandy. After that, I knew our fun in downtown was over, as the entire bottom of the map is one big death plane. So even if Hans is disabled, there's no way to get out of this area, Spongebob. Even though we hit a road bump in downtown, I still held my confidence, as I knew the next level was going to be more than in our favor. Goo Lagoon is one of those levels where it's split right down the middle with Patrick and Spongebob challenges. However, with an excessive amount of glitches and out-of-bounds skips we are able to abuse, we leave Goo Lagoon with all but one spatula, being the one you get for defeating all the robots on the pier. While taking out the robots on the bumper boats is fine, destroying the ticket booth can only be done with Patrick. I considered Goo Lagoon our first major victory. After leaving, I performed a precise jump to get out of bounds once again and enter Area 2 to avoid the Robot Sandy fight. Once there, I helped Sandy clear her treedom of robots and went to the Mermelair. The great thing about this level is it's home to some of the fastest spatulas in the entire game. This means I wasn't going to have a single problem in this level. Oh. Right. <laughs> Oh, 
Turns out, Mermelair has got this bridge that you can't cross. Safe to say, this didn't really sit well with me, as all previous levels we did, we got at least a few more than one spatula in a single sock. I left Mermelair defeated, but I didn't let the momentum we had going stop. I finished making a clean sweep of Bikini Bottom before making my way into Spongebob's dream. It really helped that a majority of the collectibles here were meant to be collected as Spongebob. However, entering Tree Dome does automatically change you to Sandy, so all we had to do was not enter it. This was by far the easiest level yet. So far, we were doing pretty well. We had a slight road bump in Mermelair, but Gilgoon and Spongebob's dream went great. Next up was Sand Mountain, home of the three main slides, Guppy Mound, Flounder Hill, and Sand Mountain. Uh, the slide, not the level. Luckily enough, Mrs. Puff, Bubble Buddy, and Larry all only accept the racing challenges from Spongebob, not Sandy. The only spatula not accessible was the spatula on top of the lodge. Overall, this stage went great. Missing out on only one spatula was not bad at all, as we are able to skip a total of 25 out of the game's 100. After this, we went across to Rock Bottom and spent way too long on this. I hate this spatula with every fiber in my body. Alright, this is the... This is the one. Yes. I didn't get a second jump. I didn't get a second jump. Excuse me? Alright, we're done. I'm not doing that anymore. Forget it. Mr. JB, of course, had me use his fun and easy method. But man, this took me forever. Basically, we store the sponge ball and jump off this rock at a very precise height and then bounce off this other rock and then sometimes you get enough height and most of the other times you don't. Oh my god, this is it. I feel it. Whoa, oh, did you see that boost? Oh, did you see that boost? Did you see how, how, I didn't even need a jump. Oh my gosh. Anyway, after that fun was had, I rushed through to the museum and went to Rock Bottom Trench. I used this Tartar bot to hit me and made it to the other side where I got this sock. Unfortunately, we were still missing a painting, so we couldn't collect the spatula from Mrs. Puff at the beginning. Kelp Forest is one of those levels that has to be done backwards and then forwards. The entire cave section is blocked off, which means that you have to go out of bounds to get the spatulas later in the level, then come back in and do it like normal up until the caves. Very confusing. This level was easy, I was surprised half the stuff was even doable. I opted not to do the caves, seeing as we got all the other spatulas and getting all these crystals didn't seem very fun. I especially didn't want to do all this stuff out of bounds either. I really couldn't think of anything worse, honestly. And just like that, we made it to our last level, the Flying Dutchman's Graveyard. Of course, this isn't really our last level, we still have to do some backtracking on the stuff we missed, but I was feeling pretty good. I already knew a lot of this level besides the boss fight was going to be doable, I speedrun this game pretty often and knew where to go and how to do most things, though the first area did hold two unobtainable spatulas because you aren't able to lower the goo levels, and the final boss couldn't be done because you automatically change to Sandy when entering. At the end of this, we were at 65 spatulas. This wasn't too good. I felt we were in a pretty poor spot for finishing all the levels. Yeah, there was cleanup to do, but I couldn't really think of a way to get another 10 spatulas. It just didn't add up. I was stuck here for a pretty long time. Until 4, the runner who completed this challenge on GameCube, showed me how to do VMS, Vertical Momentum Storage. I'll try and give you my scuffed version of how this works. You store the sponge ball, then become the sponge ball when landing on an object that changes vertical height. Then you exit the sponge ball and pause on the same frame. Unplug your controller so the game pauses as soon as you spawn. And once your controller is plugged back in, you can buffer another one frame jump, the frame after you pause, and you will go soaring into the air. Right off the bat, this opened a ton of possibilities, making this challenge more and more realistic each minute. We reached 74 spatulas, and safe to say, I was pretty happy with our position. Our last stop was Kelp Caves to finish the Crystal Spatula. Seeing as it was the last spatula we could get in the entire game, I was hell-bent on completing this challenge that night. I was so close and so determined. This is the... <laughs> this is the cake I have. Oh, blessed.
13 hours into this challenge, I was very close to calling it quits. Kelp Caves felt impossible, and after finding out that not even a task was able to get this spatula Spongebob, I felt more discouraged than ever. As more time went on, Four was in my chat discussing ideas. A runner by the name Kotada brought up the idea of save storages to save after the spatula spawns when rescuing Patrick in Jellyfish Fields. The idea is you would save after the spatula spawns, then restart your console. The spatula would be ready to collect without turning you back into Patrick. Four said that it was a great idea and tried it. Funnily enough, it worked. And that was great, right? The end of all the suffering in kelp caves? Well, not exactly. This would mean I would have to start all over from the very beginning in order to get it, as performing the glitch requires you to get a glitched save from collecting a spatula. And since there were no more spatulas for me to collect, this meant I could either restart and spend however long getting back to where I was, or just call it quits and go to bed. I was truly in quite a position, but after some encouraging actions taken by the viewers of the chat, Rail! What are you doing? And a very cool host. Shift, thanks for the zero viewer host, man. I decided it was in everyone's best interest that I see this thing through to the end. And this time, I did it right. Everyone got the got their timers. <laughs> oh my god. I just would like to preface this did not take oh god. This did not take four hours. This took roughly 17 hours. <sighs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm finally done. Oh that took so long. That took so long. That took so but it was the finally done. First person to ever do it on Xbox. It is a proven battle for Bikini Bottom beaten on Xbox with SpongeBob only. This was truly something to remember. Not only was it a fun challenge, but the viewership and streaming was awesome too. Since the whole thing started, runners have actually found ways to access the rest of Mermelair, making the run even more accessible. SpongeBob only is definitely not for the faint of heart. If you want to try it out, I would think twice. On the other side, it's a really cool challenge to do, and people seem to like discussing different ideas as there are so many options to think about in this challenge. I really did like showing it off and especially making this video. Special thanks to Agent Wombat for helping with the intro music, Four and Kotata for helping with the challenge, and my Twitch chat for keeping me company during this 17 hour challenge. And thanks for the BFBB community as a whole. These guys are really cool and really helpful with anything you need. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this. I really do have a passion for editing videos, and it's something I like sharing with everyone. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments, and I'll catch you later. Peace. Gosh, shout out to JBHJ. I have to do Warpless now. <laughs> He's gonna love rubbing my face in that. Him and his ugly cat.